Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Captain Shaq here, and welcome back to a Star Citizen Citizen Con breakdown. It's going on right now. Uh, the keynote was this morning, and overall, I'm pretty impressed. We got to see some areas I expected to see, like the character, and we got to see some core gameplay mechanics that I'd hoped to see even last year, uh, this year, that are really exciting. So let's get into the breakdown. Now, heads up. Uh, they split the demo into, the big demo, into two sections. There's one early this morning, which just happened, and there's going to be one later this afternoon. So, if you're watching this after the fact, this is going to be a two-parter for today. And if you're watching this this morning, well, the other video will be out after we get the, uh, the demo. So, I'll cut it down so you guys can see what's going on. Exciting times. Let's get into the demo, though. Well, sort of. Actually, uh, probably the most exciting bit of news was in the pre-show, an announcement of... Theaters of War. It's a new Space Marine game mode that's playable on the show floor right now for only a select few. Hopefully, we'll get some hands-on impressions from Wasted Space or Morphologists as they're actually at the CitizenCon uh, panels uh, this morning, so it's going to be neat. Anyways, this game mode is set to combine infantry, ground vehicle, and space combat into a single game mode so they can help uh, balance and test the planned combined arms part of Star Citizen that we're all so pumped for. Sure, the current PU has the potential for combined arms PvP that you can get into, but it's really hard to get going. You have to be part of a big community, schedule everything, and then get everybody into a game so you can get to a planet, spawn vehicles, and have a fight. But with this game mode, we'll be able to jump in and go right into it. Now, the players will start on the ground fighting rifle in hand and then build up to the point where they're fighting in orbit uh, over a space station. It'll be neat to see how that works. How do you unlock vehicles over time in a single match? And will it be the only vehicles you own? I don't know the details to these yet. If I do get them, we'll do a whole breakdown of it. But this is great news for anybody wanting to try out, you know, the, the weaponized version of the Nox hover bike or the missile loaded tumbler and right, you know, quick and easily and just get into the fight. Very neat. So once the demo actually got started, we finally got to see my baby, the Carrick. If you're unaware, the Carrick is probably the most hyped uh, Star Citizen ship upcoming. Something sort of like Serenity from Firefly. It's been marketed as sort of an uh, exploration ship, uh, home away from home. It's got your cargo capability, internal hangars, weapon systems. Uh, it's massive, but it's not a capital ship. It's not huge. Perfect for, you know, a captain and a small crew. Walking around, we got to see the crew quarters, the upper main bridge. We've got to see that the uh, projector table is back. We got to see the hangar with the Pisces shuttle inside. More about that later. We got to see the mess hall where they actually made a cup of coffee uh, and drank it and had a brief chat about the upcoming player needs system and how it won't be required that you have to eat or drink every hour or so. So hopefully it won't be one of those systems that's um, a little grating on some players. So that's 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 neat. I'm actually, actually happy to see that since all the ships actually have, you know, uh, the bigger ones all have galleys. We'll have some reason to have it other than, I guess, NPC... Uh, uh, caregiving for your for your crews that you can hire. We also got to see the engine bay, and finally the player made it down to the hangar. Now, all are up to the hangar because it's on the top. All interactions for the demo had them using the the new in-universe UI elements that look way less clunky, and there are a few of these already in the PU. Uh, than the internal thought system, which will normally cover up button panels when you use it in the game right now. Now, apparently the devs have made it easier for other teams outside of just the very tiny UI team to make these kind of uh, in-game panels and UIs that you can access. So we should see way more of this style of interaction. Sounds like a win for everyone. Back onto the hangar. The hangar on the Carrick isn't massive, and it'll be interesting to see what else we can fit inside it other than just other than just the Pisces. It was hard to get an idea of scale for the Pisces uh, due to the fact that we only saw it from one perspective, which was the pilots. Even though Chris Roberts was saying, hey, switch to camera one, camera one, it's almost a meme of itself at this point where then nothing happens. Now, the first bug of the demo uh, was already shown almost three minutes into it, and that is the back end of the FOIP system or the face over IP was being a bit derpy. Uh, actually, it was being completely broken, meaning none of the facial expressions of the players were transferred to their characters, which is sad because I actually quite like that system. As a role player at heart, I think it's a very interesting mechanic to have. Now, with the FOIP system being broken on the stage, it also meant their voice comms were down in the demo, meaning we couldn't hear any of the pre-scripted chatter they had for their players uh, they had set up for the live demo. No big deal, but, you know, it, it is what it is. Back on to the Pisces. Uh, we had a crew member follow our captain on to the shuttlecraft, and it is a shuttle. Reminds me kind of like the Star Trek shuttle from Nemesis. So the Carrick and the crew remained in orbit, while our perspective, the captain, took the shuttle down to the icy world below. This 
was the highlight of the demo thus far. The new Planet Tech is set out to come out in uh, 3.8, and the world of Microtech uh, is gorgeous. Now, an effort, a serious effort, has been made with this new technology to make the transition so much smoother and less repetitive than the current worlds. And it was truly seamless transition from orbit to the ground. We could see the new large-scale terrain shadows in action with these big mountain ranges casting a beautiful shadow. You could see elements of uh, the biome data actually being uh, biodata-driven effects, actually creating uh, moisture, collecting on the cockpit glass. Chris Roberts even mentioned that humidity levels and temperatures and lighting can create effects like mists off mountain ranges, etc. That's pretty freaking cool. And just watching the video as he drops down, um, you can see some really neat elements that didn't look like it was being, because we see this at uh, at ARC, we see this at ARCOR, uh, the, the repetitive nature of some of the textures down there, just really obvious. On this world though, looks gorgeous. We could even see some mega terrain elements like a frozen ocean that we were told was actually physical, meaning you could drive on that. So we could have, I guess, vehicle races on an ice lake. As the shuttle dropped altitude, the thousands of procedural pine trees came into view. And yeah, it looked incredibly natural. Eventually, the city of New Babbage came into view. Oh, by the way, this new planet tech is going to be updating already established worlds. The big takeaway from the new city, other than that I really dig the stylized view of Microtech's architecture, is the Microtech, by the way, is the company that makes all the Moby Glass that everyone uses in universe, so I guess they can afford a planet. Uh, anyways, the big takeaway is the fact that if you can see it, you can land on it. They took on the goal of removing those nasty no-fly zones, those big red uh, pop-ups uh, that we saw over on Art Corp. How crazy is that, that you can just land anywhere around here? It means we can have gameplay down there. The landscape system is a big push forward, something that deserves its own video, and it's far more impressive uh, than even this demo showcases. They actually went into quite a bit of detail, uh, and we'll talk about that at some other point. On this, the spaceport of New Babbage, it's built into a freaking mountain. It's gorgeous. It's got more landing zones than any other spaceport we've seen yet, split between small, large, and extra large. It has twice the ship capacity as other ports, and they have player environment interaction in for this planet, meaning uh, for this icy world, it's temperature. Uh, you better dress warmly. Even the UI will tell you what the current temp is, and you can actually see your breath. That temperature will affect your character. So it sounds like they're finally pushing forward. They've talked about this quite a bit. They're pushing out the concept that, you know, heavy armor isn't going to be the best thing at everything. You have to dress for what you want to do. Come equipped is what they said uh, in this demo. So no more tanky pilots uh, in Twitch fighters. You're not going to be able to sit there in your, in, your, in your Master Chief full armored suit and fly, you know, your M50. You got to gear up for your goals. They did show the character putting on a jacket before he got into the shuttle when he left his quarters on the Carrick, and once he arrives at New Babbage, he has to go pick up a lab coat, which is interesting. The lab coat is actually required for whatever his mission is. We'll talk about that more in part two of this little video series for CitizenCon 2019. The big part of the demo that I love, the gameplay part that I want to see this year, and I wanted to see it last year, is AI. We need to see what the AI can do because that's going to be the content that we're playing through for the most part. Sure, PvP will be a thing, but you gotta make the world populated with something to do. And we got to see a bit of that. We got to see AI flying a Valkyrie at the very end as part of the mission that the captain took. So he's got his lab coat and he boards this Valkyrie before setting off. And there's NPCs actually in the ship disembarking, barking back on. They talk about how they've got that system working. You can actually have you know a dropship come down and troops deploy. So, last year that was my number one thing I wanted to see, the AI and NPC progress, and this year we got to see a bit of it. I really am looking forward to part two of this. Hopefully, they double down, it looks like they're going to, on how the AI is going to behave, uh, and maybe what we can see in the PU, coming soon. But that's it, everything else is going to be held up for part two as we see where the demo actually goes for the rest of this mission. What are they going to do in that ship? Why is there a lab coat? Are we going to see stealth elements? I don't know. What we'll find out. What was your favorite part of the demo thus far? What are you hoping to see from some of the panels that are going to be going on behind closed doors? We're going to see that stuff over on YouTube, on their channel, over the course of the next week or so, they said. So, I want to know more about the Carrick, and I want to know more about the interaction system with the, uh, the in-universe UI. How can that be used to change and affect the ships that we're in? That's got a lot of potential for the level and the, the ship designers to play around with. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all in the next one. Later, everybody.